Let's get right into it. Number 11. Monopoly's Stolen Origins The world's most famous board game was actually stolen from a woman who wanted to destroy capitalism. In 1903, Elizabeth Maggi created The Landlord's Game. It was designed to show how greedy landlords and monopolies were ruining society. The game had two sets of rules, one where everyone got richer together, and one where one person took everything. Just like modern Monopoly, she wanted to prove that sharing wealth was better than hoarding it. Then along comes Charles Darrow in the 1930s. He played Maggie's game at a friend's house and copied everything. The board layout, the properties, even go to jail in the corner. He just changed a few street names and sold it to Parker Brothers. Parker Brothers knew Maggie had the original patent, so they offered her $500 for it, about $10,000 in today's money. Meanwhile, they paid Darrow millions. Maggie died in 1948, poor and forgotten. Her obituary didn't even mention the game. Number 10. Mary Anderson and the Windshield Wiper On a freezing New York day in 1902, trolley drivers had to stick their heads out the window to see. They looked like golden retrievers on a road trip. Except instead of enjoying the breeze, they were trying not to crash and die. Mary Anderson watched this ridiculous scene and thought there had to be a better way. She invented a simple lever inside the car that moved a rubber blade across the glass. When she tried to sell her patent in 1905, companies literally laughed her out of the room. They said it would distract drivers, because apparently, sticking your whole head out the window in a blizzard was less distracting. Then, just a few years later, cars started appearing with windshield wipers. By 1922, Cadillac was putting them on every car they made, using her exact design. But Mary's patent had expired. She never saw a penny. The woman who made it possible to drive in the rain went back to running her cattle ranch. Meanwhile, car companies made billions from her stolen idea. Number 9. The Computer Mouse Back in the 1960s, computers were massive machines that took up entire rooms. You had to feed them instructions through punch cards. Then Douglas Engelbart created a weird wooden box with wheels. The first computer mouse looked like something a kid would make in shop class. He called it a mouse because the cord sticking out the back looked like a tail. In 1968, Engelbart showed off his creation in what's now called the mother of all demos. It was like showing cavemen a lighter while they're still rubbing sticks together. Then Steve Jobs visited Xerox, saw their version of the mouse, and had what he calls an epiphany, an epiphany that looked suspiciously like copying someone else's homework. Jobs took the mouse, made it cheaper, sleeker, and sold it to everyone. The original Xerox mouse cost $300 to make. Apple's version cost just $15. While Apple got rich selling mice with their computers, Engelbart never saw a penny. The wooden box that changed the world made everyone rich except its inventor. Number 8. The Telephone Alexander Graham Bell didn't actually invent the telephone. An Italian inventor named Antonio Mucci had already built the Teletrofono back in 1849. That's 27 years before Bell's famous Mr. Watson Come Here moment. But Mucci was so broke he couldn't afford the $10 to maintain his patent. His invention vanished into history. Then, on the same day Bell filed his patent, another guy named Elisha Gray filed almost the exact same thing. They were just hours apart. A clerk at the patent office later admitted to taking a $100 bribe to show Gray's design to Bell. That's about $2,500 in today's money for stealing one of the most important inventions ever. Bell's company went on to become AT&T, while Mucci died penniless. The controversy got so big that Western Union hired Thomas Edison to try and prove Bell was a fraud. In 2002, the U.S. Congress officially recognized Mucci as the true inventor of the telephone. Unfortunately, Mucci had been dead for 113 years by then. Number 7. The Light Bulb Thomas Edison was more like a guy who walked into someone else's restaurant, tweaked the recipe a bit, then claimed he invented cooking. The real story starts with a British guy named Joseph Swan. He had already created a working light bulb, and was lighting up homes in England. This was before Edison even started tinkering with filaments. But Edison had something Swan didn't, an army of lawyers and a talent for stealing patents. He took Swan's design, then sued him for patent infringement. Swan took Edison to court in Britain. The judge told Edison to either work with Swan or get out of Britain. So Edison partnered with Swan in Britain while claiming all the credit in America. But even Swan wasn't the first. A German watchmaker named Heinrich Goebel had already made working light bulbs 25 years before Edison. Goebel's bulbs used bamboo filaments and could burn for up to 400 hours. He even tried to sell his invention to Edison's company. They said no. Then, 
when Edison finally invented his light bulb, he used the exact same bamboo filaments. Edison got rich and famous. Goebel died poor, selling sandwiches from a cart. Number 6. Radio. Guglielmo Marconi, the guy who invented radio, was more of a professional idea thief than an inventor. The real genius was Nikola Tesla, the same guy who died alone in a hotel room talking to pigeons. Back in the 1890s, Tesla was building a massive tower called Wardenclyffe. It was designed to use the Earth itself to transmit signals. The actual ground under your feet would carry messages and even pictures. But while Tesla was busy being a genius, Marconi was busy making friends with rich people. Marconi used 17 of Tesla's patents to build his own radio system. He even got a patent in 1904, declaring him the inventor of radio. Tesla tried to fight back in court, but he was broke. He ran out of money, and his tower was demolished for scrap. In 1943, the U.S. Supreme Court finally gave the patent rights back to Tesla, but Tesla had been dead for six months. Turns out, having rich friends is more important than having good ideas. Number 5. The Television A 14-year-old farm boy was plowing his family's potato field. He looked at the rows and realized you could scan an image line by line. By age 21, he had built the first working electronic TV. No moving parts, just electrons painting pictures on a screen. The first image he ever transmitted was a simple dollar sign. Then came RCA, the tech giant of the time. Their boss, David Sarnoff, offered to buy his patents. When Farnsworth refused, Sarnoff told him, I'll break you. RCA tried everything to crush him. They even sent a spy to his lab. But the spy ended up testifying for Farnsworth because he couldn't handle how dirty RCA was playing. In court, RCA claimed their guy invented TV first. But Farnsworth's old high school teacher saved the day. He still had a sketch Farnsworth drew on the blackboard when he was 14. RCA lost a multi-million dollar case because a teacher never erased the board. But RCA just waited. World War II came along, and TV production stopped. By the time the war ended, Farnsworth's patents had expired. RCA started mass-producing TVs using his technology without paying him a dime. Farnsworth ended up depressed and drinking heavily. He refused to let his own kids watch TV. He told them, there's nothing on it worth watching. The only time he ever watched was the moon landing. He pointed at the screen and told his wife, I made that possible. Then he went back to never watching TV again. Number 4. Hedy Lamarr and Frequency Hopping By day, she was Hollywood's most gorgeous actress. But while other stars had makeup tables in their trailers, Hedy had an inventing table. She was building the future while waiting for her close-up. During World War II, she realized enemy submarines were sinking Allied ships by jamming their torpedo signals, so she came up with frequency hopping. The idea was to make the signal jump between 88 different frequencies, like playing hide-and-seek with radio waves. The enemy couldn't jam what they couldn't catch. The inspiration came from player pianos, those old-timey pianos that play themselves using paper rolls with holes. She teamed up with a composer named George Anthail. Together they figured out how to make a torpedo dance to sheet music. In 1942, they got a patent for their secret communication system, but when they took it to the Navy, the admirals told her to stick to looking pretty. The military couldn't imagine putting what they saw as a player piano in a torpedo, so they buried her invention in their files. Her patent expired and was forgotten. Then, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, the military suddenly remembered it. They started using her technology without giving her a cent. Today, your phone uses Hetty's frequency hopping every time you use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Number 3. Rosalind Franklin and Photo 51 Photo 51 is a black-and-white x-ray image that revealed the secret of life itself, and it was stolen from the woman who took it. Rosalind Franklin took this photo of DNA, that twisted ladder thing that makes you look like your parents. She spent over 100 hours just to get this one perfect shot, but then James Watson and Francis Crick came along. These guys were like the tech bros of 1950s science. Without Franklin's knowledge, they got their hands on Photo 51. Watson later admitted that when he saw the image, his mouth fell open. They used her work to build their famous DNA model. When they published their groundbreaking paper, they barely mentioned Franklin. Just a tiny note in the acknowledgments, like thanking the pizza delivery guy. In 1962, Watson and Crick won the Nobel Prize, but Franklin wasn't there to object. She had died of cancer four years earlier. The cancer was probably caused by all the x-ray exposure from her work. She literally died taking the photo that made other people famous. The Nobel Committee has a rule. You can't award prizes to dead people. So she never got one. 
Watson and Crick got rich and famous. Franklin got cancer and a footnote in history. Watson later wrote a book where he called her Rosie, a name she hated. He painted her as an angry woman who couldn't handle criticism. Number 2. The Discovery of Anesthesia Back in the 1800s, surgery was basically torture with a medical degree. Doctors would rate their skill by how fast they could cut you open and sew you back up. A dentist named Horace Wells was the first to use laughing gas to pull teeth without pain. He tried to show it off at Harvard Medical School. The demonstration went horribly wrong. The patient screamed in pain, and everyone laughed Wells out of the room. Meanwhile, his former student, William Morton, saw his chance. Morton switched to ether, which worked better than laughing gas. He tested it on everything that moved. His goldfish, his dog, even himself. He gave it a fancy name, Letheon, like putting a designer label on a bottle of nail polish remover. He walked into Massachusetts General Hospital and put a patient to sleep. A surgeon removed a tumor from the guy's neck. When the patient woke up, he said it felt like someone just tickled his neck. Morton tried to patent his discovery and get rich. He wouldn't tell anyone what was in it and wanted doctors to pay him every time they used it. Wells couldn't handle seeing his former friend get famous from his idea. He became addicted to chloroform and started experimenting on himself. One day, he ran into the street and threw acid on someone. He was arrested and killed himself in his jail cell. He did it by cutting open his leg and breathing in chloroform. Morton spent the rest of his life in court battles. He couldn't patent ether since it was already a known chemical. He died broke, having a seizure in Central Park. The two men who helped create modern anesthesia both died miserable deaths, one by his own anesthetic, the other fighting over who deserves credit. Number 1. Louis Le Prince, the father of cinema. In 1888, a French inventor named Louis Le Prince built the world's first movie camera. It looked like a weird box with 16 lenses sticking out of it, like a spider with glass eyes. He used it to film his family in their garden, just 2.11 seconds of people walking around. The world's first home video. While Thomas Edison was still trying to figure out how to make movies, Le Prince had already cracked it. He was about to show his invention to the world in New York. Then, on September 16, 1890, he got on a train to Paris. He never got off. No body, no luggage, nothing. It's like he was erased from existence. Right after Le Prince vanished, Thomas Edison suddenly figured out how to make movies. His cameras looked suspiciously similar to Le Prince's design. Le Prince's family tried to fight Edison in court, but it's hard to win a court case when your star witness has vanished into thin air. Edison's lawyers actually argued that Le Prince never existed. They also used a loophole to win. Without a body, Le Prince wasn't legally dead. And if he wasn't legally dead, his patents weren't valid. His son, who kept fighting Edison, was later found shot dead. The police called it a hunting accident, but he was found in an area where hunting wasn't allowed. Today, most history books credit Edison with inventing movies. The man who actually invented cinema vanished without a trace. The only proof he ever existed is that first movie he made. So the inventor of motion pictures lives on as nothing but a moving picture, forever walking around his garden, not knowing he was about to vanish from history. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.